This is Douglas Fairbanks. This is Don DeFore. This is Craig Stevens. This is Henry O'Neill. And this is Hugh Douglas saying, Welcome to Hollywood Soundstage. Another Thursday night, another high adventure on Hollywood Soundstage. Adventure in its truest sense tonight, because our story is based on fact, a stirring human document. 20th Century Fox Studios' memorable tribute to the men who served without name or glory. In thanks to them, in thanks to all who have died to keep our nation free, Hollywood Soundstage brings you transcribed... 13 Rue Madeleine, starring Douglas Fairbanks. Craig Stevens, Henry O'Neill, Don DeVore, and the Screen Guild Players. This is a page out of history in our time. This is a record of valorous men who served without uniforms or medals or acclaim. This is a story of the OSS. The Second World War was already six months old when a presidential directive created the Office of Strategic Services, the famous OSS, a super-secret intelligence service, the first espionage system in the history of our nation. By the early part of 1944, it had already trained 67 teams of OSS agents. And now, a new class, Group 68, after careful and exhaustive screening, is taken under tight security to a beautiful country club near Washington. Two of that group are Jeff Lassiter and Bill O'Connell. Quite a place, huh? Pretty luxurious. What do you mean, luxurious? They said we got a bunk two to the room. (laughs) Say, you picked a roommate yet? No, not yet. Okay, you got one. Name is Jeff Lassiter. Bill O'Connell. Shake. Well, if introductions are in order, gentlemen, I'm Suzanne de Bouchard. Isn't it a beautiful place? All in the line of duty, they said. For personal assessment and further training. (laughs) Rugged, huh? (laughs) I'll say. Big lounge like this, soft leather chairs, books, magazines. Hey, look, we've even got a backgammon set. Yeah, that's right. You play? Yeah. Like to take me on for a couple of games? Sure. Oh, nice. I'll watch. I've always wanted to learn that game. Well, now look, Lassiter, uh, let's make it interesting. Oh, I just play for fun, O'Connell. I'll tell you what. How about a thousand a game? A th- no, let's make it a million. Okay, a million. You, you mean a million dollars? Sure, what about it? <laughs> I think you're both crazy. (laughs) As they play, two other men are sitting in an office upstairs. Charles Gibson, right-hand man of the OSS chief, and Bob Sharkey, former All-American, in charge of training. Get them started tomorrow, Bob. In three months, they must be in shape to go. They'll be in shape. That's my assignment. That's one of them. What do you mean? Twenty-two potential OSS agents. All of them speak French. One of them can speak German. Well... It's your job to find out who it is. Yeah? It's not as easy as it sounds. Why not? Because one of your students is a German agent. German agent? You know which one? Yes. Man or woman? As soon as you find out, let me know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, all right. I got a couple of things to say before you begin your active training. From here in, it's work. The pressure is on. I'll just start right now to learn the use of a cover story, a logical lie about who you are and what you're doing. This is your most important defensive weapon. If the enemy breaks it when you're in the field, you'll be tortured. If you're lucky, you'll be shot. Start thinking you're in the field right now. Here's something I might as well warn you about. You've got a lot to learn and a couple of things to forget. The average American is a good sport. He plays by the rules. Well, no secret agent is a good sport. That is, no living agent. You're going to be taught to kill, to cheat, to rob, to lie, and everything you learn is toward one objective. Just one, that's all, the success of your mission. Fair play, that's out. Years of decency, forget all about them, or turn in your suit, because the enemy can forget and has. Now, work hard. I'll be watching every one of you. Four weeks, Bob. How do they look? Good. I think we ought to get 15. Two months. You better lay it on. I told you, Gibson, they'll be ready. This 15 is a special importance, Bob. They may mean the difference between success and failure. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about myself. I haven't found that Nazi yet. No 
full and I could hardly believe my own ears. When they told us we were finished at noon? You weren't the only one surprised, Jeff. <laughs> the way they've been pouring it on for three months. Twelve, fourteen hours a day, hiking, swimming, learning how to kill and rob and steal and how to send wireless messages and code, how to make a parachute jump. And then getting your cover story down, Pat. Honest, I'm not so sure my name is Lester. It's worth it. Sure it is. Suzanne, I, I guess this means a lot to you, huh? Getting back to France? Perhaps I'll find out then. I've waited so long. Someone close to you? My husband. He was reported missing at Dunkirk. Well, you you mustn't give up. The women of France will never give up. Say, Bill, we've got an hour to dinner. Uh, how about a little game? Sure. Jeff, how much do you owe him now? Fifteen million, but I'm chopping it down. Fifteen million? Bill, you rich. Well, the government will take most of it. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff, you start. Sorry, men. That'll have to wait. Mr. Sharkey. What's up? Dinner's an hour early tonight. You start your field problem first thing in the morning. So you think you found him, Bob? Yeah, I'm sure I have. All right. Who's the German agent? O'Connell. How did you know? Well, he's the first stand man in the class. That was the tip-off. And last night I heard him trying to pump to Bouchard, trying to find out if she expected to go back to France. And then the field problem clinched it. You read the report. Yes. That test was designed for them to make mistakes. They learn more that way. But O'Connell didn't make any mistakes. It was a cinch for O'Connell. He's been through it all before. Name is Consul. Have we a five? One of their best. Oh, well, when do you want to pick him up? I don't. What? And he mustn't know he's even suspected. Why? We've had him pegged for a long time. He's after something big, or it wouldn't be Consul. Information? The second front? We think so. Where and when? Where and when? Yeah. They would like to know that, wouldn't they? Yeah, Consul's a big shot. The German high command is counting on his information, so we've got to arrange for him to get it. Information. The wrong information. Hmm. We've got to let him take it back to them. I see, yeah. Uh, the plan will include a logical way for him to make his escape. It must be cleverly staged. Remember, we're dealing with a very smart man. When do we start? When we get to England. I'll leave tomorrow. You can follow with the group. We're ready. Good. <laughs> Within a few days, Group 68 is flown to England and quartered in a country house not far from London. They are held there under tight security, waiting for their assignments, and the plan proceeds. O'Connell, how well do you know Holland? I lived there for two years. I know it very well. I thought so. O'Connell, the pictures change. Change? How do you mean? You read the papers. They're full of talk about a second front. Everyone knows there's going to be one. You think it's Holland? What I think doesn't count. That's somebody else's job. We just obey orders. Yes, sir. O'Connell, I've been given a job. I need help. Someone with a proper background. Someone who's proved he can come through in a pinch. You know what I mean. You want to go to work? <laughs> I didn't go through all that training to be an English country gentleman. <laughs> okay. Pack your gear. We're going up to London. Now? In ten minutes. No goodbyes, nothing. No word to anybody but what I've said. You're under tight security starting right now. Is that clear? Yes, sir. It's clear. What do you think, Bob? Did he take the bait? I think so, Gibson. I've put him in with Van Dyvel, Holland Intelligence. We've opened up everything to him. Maps, plans, reports from all our agents, and I've put six plans at his disposal. If he makes a break in one of them, we're okay. If he makes a break. I uh, hope you pick for the real job. Last of her. And the Debouchard girls. They're on their way down here now. You'll brief them yourself? This afternoon, yeah. Lassiter, this is it. This is the payoff. You think you're ready? I think so. Good boy. You're going to France. You too, Debouchard, as Lassiter's communicator. To France. I'll make this as brief as I can. The Germans know they can't win this war, but they're hoping for a stalemate. The only way they can achieve it is to prevent an invasion. And we can't win unless we do invade. Correct. That's why you're going over. You're going to help make the invasion a certainty. How? These rumors of Hitler's secret weapon aren't just rumors. He has a rocket bomb of devastating possibilities. It carries a warhead with two tons of explosives. Wow. Mm -hmm. And for the last six months, he's been building up a huge stock, saving all his resources for just one thing, the invasion. Mm -hmm. Now, this bomb depot is somewhere between Caen and La Havre. That's all we know. Mm -hmm. Even the French resistance, the Mackey, haven't been able to spot it for us. All of the workmen, forced labor, have been liquidated as soon as they finish their particular job. That's our job, huh? To uh, find the bomb depot? Well, that's part of it. To destroy it, we must know every detail of its construction. One man can help us with that, a Monsieur Duclos. 
Now, here, look. This is his picture. Yes. Brand that name and picture on your mind. The success of your mission, possibly of the entire invasion, is linked to that man. Oh. Monsieur Duclos. What's his connection with the bomb depot? He designed it and built it. You'll have one week. Get your cover story down pat. Learn every detail of that section of the coast. We'll fit you with costumes and a set of forged papers. You're under tight security, of course. Of course. We understand. Hey, you Jeff! Bill! Bill O'Connell. How are you, fellow? Well, I didn't know you were down here in London. The way you walked off in the middle of the night. <laughs> I know. I had to leave in a hurry. Oh? Good job? We're toughy. Not much action. Looks like I'm grounded. Hey, uh, what are you doing here? Prepping for a mission? Yeah. Sorry, I can't tell you what. <laughs> I always knew you were a bad investment. Hey, what do I owe you? Thirteen million? Fourteen. Well, I'll will it down when I get back. When are you leaving? I don't know for sure. I wish I were going with you. Me too. Well, I gotta run. Be seeing you, Bill. Yeah, bring me back a souvenir. Sure thing. <laughs> Bob, what about O'Connell? You think he's sold? <laughs> Listen, Gibson, it was set up so well, I began to think Holland was the right place myself. Besides, he's playing with the real stuff. Requests come in from agents in Holland. He fills the request. The supplies get there. He's got to believe it. But he hasn't made the break. No, no. And he's got six planes. He could go any time. Maybe he feels he's too hot that we're watching him. If he started, we might pick him off. Maybe. Mm. But in a few days, it'll be too late. He's got to get that misinformation back now. It's that close, huh? Well, suppose we force him to make his break. Hand him his chance on a silver platter. How? Oh. Give him a logical reason to leave. Maybe... Maybe even send him ourselves. Send him on a phony mission. <laughs> We're getting information, O'Connell, but we're not getting enough. The Germans think we're going into France. That's fine, but what do they suspect about Holland? They're not stupid, you know. No, sir. We must know if they're preparing in Holland, too, and where. We've got to send someone over to find out for us. Yes, sir. A good man, the best we have. Someone who knows Holland, well, as well as you do. I know the man. Who's that? Me. Oh, that doesn't make sense. I need you here. Your job's important. Well, it's more important to have the right man over there. Uh, I don't know. I've got to have that information. If you let me go, I'll... I'll get it for you. I could take over your work here, I guess. You'd be directly in touch with me by radio. O'Connell, I think I'll take a chance. I'll need some help. Yes, you'll need a team, another man and a communicator. Whom do you want? Lassiter. Lassiter? Why Lassiter? Well, we work together at school. I know him. It takes time to know people. Yeah. Uh, besides, I, I think he'd like to go. Okay, I'll see if we can send him. I'll talk to you later. But, Mr. Sharkey, the whole thing is silly. I went all through school with O'Connell. I've slept in the same room with him for months. It's, well, it's crazy. Don't feel too badly about it, Lester. He's smart. One of the smartest men they have. For a long time, O'Connell alias Kunzel fooled me, too. Now then, you understand the entire setup, don't you? I think so, but what about Duclos? That's still your mission. You'll proceed to calm by way of Holland. The Bouchard will go along with you, of course. One of our agents has been instructed... He'll get you through. Now comes the rugged part. You think the rest is easy? We think O'Connell is sold. If we're right, he'll make his break and you'll never see him again. But if he's not sold, if he should in any way suspect you're on a double mission, you're going to play it his way. His way? What's that? If he doesn't make his break, or if he tries to follow you, you're going to shoot him. Shoot him? And be sure it's for keeps. That's... Well, that's rough. That's... That's war. O'Connell could do it. Can you? Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. You are listening to the Hollywood Soundstage production of 13 Rue Madeleine. Starring Douglas Fairbanks, Henry O'Neill, Craig Stevens, and Don DeFore. We will continue our story in just a moment. But first, here's an inside tip for you. Connie Brooks believes that if at first you don't succeed, the only course is to try, try again. 
In fact, our Miss Brooks, played by Eve Arden, has been riotously trying, trying again and again to land her heartthrob, the most eligible bachelor of Madison High School. Our Miss Brooks' next brush with Cupid is scheduled for this Sunday night on most of these same CBS radio stations. Now back to Hollywood Soundstage and Act Two of 20th Century Fox Studios' gripping documentary, 13 Rue Madeleine, starring Douglas Fairbanks, Don DeFore, Craig Stevens, and Henry O'Neill. The plan goes forward. At OSS headquarters in London, Sharky and Gibson wait tensely for a report as a B-24 speeds through the night toward Holland. Inside the plane, three people in jumpsuits sit quietly, waiting. A woman and two men. They sit in absolute silence until finally... Uh, Jeff? Yeah? The way you've been sitting there staring at me. What's the matter? Nothing. Sure there is. You've been looking at me like I was in a test tube. Sorry. Guess I'm a little nervous. Yeah. I'm a little nervous, too. We're getting close. Check your stomach lines. You jump first, miss. Check. Laster next. Check. O'Connell last. Check. Coming over the target now. Keep your eyes on me. Jeff? Yeah? You know that 14 million you owe me? Huh? I'm wiping off Run the books. Run in. Oh. Jump stations. I go first. What's 14 million, Lassenter? Never have time to spend it anyway. Number one, go! We're even, Jeff. You don't owe me a dime. We'll start from scratch. Number two, go! Ah! What's the matter with that tennis line? It ain't paying up. It ain't... Hey, you! Oh, Colonel! Hey! Bob, you're sure that message was to Bouchard's transmission? Sure. Our operator worked with him. He says he's positive he knows her touch. Read it again. Lassiter killed in jump. O'Connell disappeared. Proceeding mission area as planned. Signed, Suzanne. Oh, that's a tough break. Yeah. Come in. This message just came in, Mr. Gibson, from the radio operator on the plane. Thanks. Yes, sir. What is it? What's up? Lassiter's static cord was deliberately cut. What? His chute never opened. He was murdered. What a rotten way to die. The question is, what did Kunstel know? Could he have known about Lassiter's mission? No, but he's probably picked up Lassiter's papers. He knows we gave him Vichy credentials. More than that. He knows the Howl invasion is a phony. Yeah. Or he wouldn't have killed Lassiter. I've done a great job, all right. I stepped into the pitch and swung my brains out. You conceding the victory? I don't concede anything until they throw dirt in my face. All right. Let's go from there. We've got five days to get another man over there. Pick up Duclos and blast the target. Who have we got to send? There's only one man. Who? Me. No. We haven't got time to brief another man. We'll need those five days at the other end. I'm sorry, Bob. You know the date and the place of the invasion. I did know. I've forgotten. You know what it would mean if you were captured once it was discovered who you were. Sure, torture, but I'll have my L tablet. One bite and I'd be gone. They'd never find out anything about the invasion. Mm, Bob, I I wish I could let you go, but... Look, uh, Gibson, I need the break. I've been working too hard. I need the change. You won't come back? (laughs) You're a worrier. This time I'll keep my eye on the pitcher. Within 24 hours, Sharky is on his way to France. A parachute landing, a quick meeting with Suzanne, who's been advised to stand by, and the following morning at Pont Levec, a little town about 40 miles from Love, a prosperous-looking French businessman is registering at the local hotel. Fill in the form, please, monsieur. How long do you wish to stay? Oh, long enough to accomplish my business. How long will that be, sir? Oh, two or three days. I'd like a room with... Excuse a... me, monsieur. Uh, yes? I must travel to see your papers. Oh, but uh, why? Who knows? New security regulations. Ah. The orders came today from La Havre. Your papers, please. What is your authority? Hans Feinke, Gestapo. Well, all right, but this red tape is a nuisance. Just holds up business. Here are my papers. Mm. Gabriel Chavat, insurance claims adjuster. Photograph, description, signature. Yes, it all seems in order. And if you don't mind, Just I'd... a minute. What else? Where was your grandfather buried? Which one? On your father's side. In the St. Maurice Cemetery at Toulon. Anything else? No. I hope you like your room. I 
followed it through myself, Herr Kunzel. I had headquarters at Toulon checked the city files. There's no Shabbat buried in the St. Maurice Cemetery. Yes, Hans, go on. Uh, it is a small thing, but not a natural mistake for a Frenchman. It's the small ones that count. What else? I followed him when he left the hotel. He went to the mayor's office. One of my men got a picture of him as he went up the steps. You have the picture with you? Uh, right here, Herr Kunzel. Uh, he had no idea that... Sharky! He... This is Sharky's picture. He came himself. Must be important. Hans. Yeah? Back to Point Lebec. I want to see the mayor. Yes, uh, the man was here to see me yesterday from the Department of Compulsory Labor at Vichy. He told you we sent him? Uh, monsieur, he had papers, a letter of commission. What did he want? More men from the village for the labor battalions. Did you give him any? Oh, I could not, monsieur. My people will no longer follow me. Look, this paper, you see what it says? Death to the German collaborator. All day long I have found this in my car, in my office, everywhere I go. Uh, they do not understand. I have done only what I thought was right. I have only hoped to avoid reprisals. Where is this man who came to see you? He has disappeared. The resistance. He will never be found. Uh, I do my best and the people do not understand. Get <laughs> down, get down. You hear, monsieur? You hear? They're going to kill me. I need protection. Hans, Hans. Is a company of guards stationed here? Yes, sir. At the Hotel Herr Kunzel. Order them out. That was part of the plan. Thought out to every last minute detail. The moment the hotel is left without guard, a small group of men slip in quietly through the back. They go directly to a room on an upper floor and fling the door open. Come along, Duclo. You're going to England. A plane is waiting in a secret place. Duclo is put aboard. The plane takes off. Sharky remains behind. He has work still to do. He does not know that his picture has been given to every German agent in the coastal section. And two days later, in Gibson's office in London... We just got a transmission from Dibu Shah, sir. What? They... they got Mr. Sharky. They have taken him to La Havre, 13 Rue Madeleine. Sharky? Was he uh, lucky? No, sir. He was taken alive. <laughs> Just three questions, Sharky, that's all. What was your mission? Where is the invasion coming? When? Fine, we'll make you tell. You know that, Sharky. You know a man can take only so much punishment. Remember? You taught me. Fair play. Years of decency, that's out. Remember? You've done your job. Now I'll accomplish my mission. Where, Sharky? Where are they coming in? Kunzel, I'm glad you remembered everything I taught you. You were a top man in your class, but not good enough. I'm all right, Hans. Sharky, you just made a bad mistake. Take him downstairs, men. We'll make him talk. All right, men. All right. You pilots have been chosen for your special qualifications. You've been asked to attempt a hazardous mission. To blast a target at zero feet. You'll be risking your lives. You have a right to know why. Your target is out there, headquarters in La Havre, 13 Rue Madeleine. They're holding an American agent there. If he talks, it may cost two million American lives. He won't talk, not as long as he can stand the punishment they're giving him. Only no human body can stand it too long. You must be sure that no one in that house escapes. Where, Sharky? Where? Where? Tell me, Sharky. Where? Where? Plane. Where? Raid. Where? 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 You ready to talk? Yeah. I'm ready. Mission completed. You have just heard Douglas Fairbanks, Henry O'Neill, Craig Stevens, and Don DeFore in their Hollywood soundstage presentation of 13 Room Madeleine. 
And now, before our curtain falls, here's a final word from our stars. You, I just want to say that it's always a great privilege to appear here on Hollywood Soundstage with the Screen Guild players. Gentlemen, I presume I can say that for all of us, can I? Absolutely, Doug. This radio program supports the greatest cause in our industry, the Motion Picture Relief Fund. And that's close to the heart of every actor in Hollywood. Yes, but don't stop with performers, Don. Everybody's in this act. Henry's right. Producers, directors, writers, they're all combining to make this one of the top half hours in the radio week. Correct. As witness, next week's show. Well, but what is it, Doug? <laughs> oh, no. Hugh Douglas started this, and he'll have to finish it up. Good night, everybody, and thanks. <laughs> week, Hollywood Soundstage brings you a story that made history on the screen. A famous novel and a magnificent motion picture, it becomes a profoundly stirring radio drama. Yes, it's RKO's memorable Academy Award winner, The Informer. And it will star Paul Douglas, Isabel Jewell, and Tom Powers. Remember, next Thursday night at the same time, for the dramatic treat of the radio season, be sure and listen to Paul Douglas, Isabel Jewell, and Tom Powers in The Informer. Mark it on your calendar right now. 13 Room Madeleine was presented through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studios, whose current Technicolor release is Red Skies of Montana, starring Richard Widmark. Douglas Fairbanks is currently presenting his latest production, Another Man's Poison, starring Betty Davis and Gary Merrill. Don DeFore is now appearing in A Girl in Every Port, an RKO Radio Pictures production co-starring Groucho Marx and Marie Wilson. Henry O'Neill will soon be seen in the Columbia Pictures release, Scandal Sheep. Craig Stevens will soon be seen in Phone Call from a Stranger, a 20th Century Fox production. Also heard in tonight's play were Shep Mencken, Gladys Holland, Ralph Sedan, Paul Dubov, and Peter Lee. Hollywood Soundstage was transcribed in the film Capital, with music under the supervision of Alexander Courage. Our play was adapted and directed by Harry Cronman. <laughs> Answer the call. Answer the call for volunteers to help during the Red Cross fund drive. Many thousands of volunteers are needed this year to help the Red Cross collect the funds to carry on your mercy work. Now is the time to lend a hand to the organization which is always on call, ready with help for neighbors and friends the world over. When you volunteer for Red Cross fund collection, you're standing beside a wounded soldier on the battlefield, offering him the blood to save his life. Blood made possible by the Red Cross Blood Center. This is Hugh Douglas speaking. And remember, it's two hours of music, the nation's favorite songs, every Friday night on the CBS Radio Network.